Hello everyone, Reza here and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. In this one, I'm going to explain the mesh to metahuman workflow for creating metahuman from your existing static mesh all in Unreal Engine 5. It's going to be a fun one, so let's get started. All right, let's go through the steps and prepare our scene and set up our Unreal Engine project. First things first, you need the MetaHuman plugin. So you go and open Epic Games, you go to Marketplace and search for MetaHuman plugin. Now, if you've already installed the plugin and the engine, if you go install to engine, you get this uh, reminder saying that you cannot install the plugin as it's already installed. So it's only first time where you just go add and install the engine and it goes through the process of downloading it. Once that's done, we go ahead and launch Unreal Engine 5. And of course, um, it really doesn't matter what industry you pick. I'm gonna go with film, gonna go with blank and as for the tutorials I'm just going to target the main folder for the name of the project we're gonna call this metahuman uh, starter content on and off really doesn't matter ray tracing off and I'm gonna go create cool now I'm in the scene First things first, we need to make sure that the plugin has been enabled. So I'm going to go to plugin and I'm just going to type in human. And you need to make sure that meta human is enabled. I'm going to go, this plugin is experimental version. That's totally fine. And we are going to restart the engine. Once that's done, uh, it's time to bring our model. Now, in the meantime, it's a good idea to go to Quixel Bridge and make sure that you logged in the Quixel Bridge. So log in with your Epic Games account and make sure you have uh, this part sorted as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. Cool. I'm all logged in. I'm just going to close Quixel Bridge and let's uh, switch back to Autodesk Maya. I just want to show you my base mesh in case if you're wondering. Here I am inside Autodesk Maya. This is a model that's been made through photogrammetry. It's already been UV'd. There's not much in there. I've got head and two eyes basically. And uh, what I usually do in situation like this, I select the model and I go to in the modeling menu set, I'm just gonna go into mesh display. I'm going to soften the edges, making sure that everything is very smooth. There is no faceted edges, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to delete by type history. And I believe there's a little bit of transformation in there. So I'm just going to go and freeze transformation as well. I'm going to select my model. I'm gonna to go to file and export selection. FBX is selected. Now I'm gonna go in there and uh, I'm going to type in meta human underscore Reza. Uh, as for the options, smoothing groups on, and I'm going to scroll down, axis conversion, up axis is set to Z, all good. And I'm gonna go export selection. That part of this is done. Let's switch back to Unreal Engine 5. Now I'm in Unreal Engine 5. Probably I don't need this ground level. I can press H or press delete, really doesn't matter. I'm gonna to go to Content Browser. I'm going to create a brand new folder. Call this MetaHuman. It's always a good idea to have your own content. I'm gonna right click, import to games, and I'm gonna to go to desktop and I'm going to bring in metahuman underscore 
Reza. Now in here probably you really don't need to make any changes. You don't even need to convert scene because we've already taken the z-axis into consideration. The only thing that I would like to do because I was dealing with multiple objects, if you go under advanced, I just want to make sure that combine meshes is enabled. With that, I'm just going to go import all. That brings the Lambert that was assigned to the mesh. If you don't want to bring the material, you can definitely tick uh, off the material so you don't bring it. Eventually, it would be ideal if you can sort of have the albedo uh, skin texture. If you have it, then you can definitely set up a material, go in there, uh, create a new material and bring that object as sRGB and assign it to your metahuman. For now, I'm just going to bring it over here. Um, I'm going to press end to place this little guy on the ground. And probably I can rotate that with a snapping tool, rotation tool on, I can just rotate it 180 degrees and press F to frame it. Control L to adjust the lighting a little bit. Something like that should do the trick. Now I'm ready to uh, go to the next step. Now I set up the project and imported and prepared my content mesh. Uh, it's time to go to the next step again. If you already have a material that you would like to assign, it would be a good idea to do it now. So you basically go in here, you go ahead and create a material name the material, double click on it, um, and just take it from there. As a matter of fact, it's really not a bad idea for me to create something so it's not Lambert. So I'm just going to press three left click to bring a 3D constant, assign it to the base color, and basically maybe something like this, just a light gray color should do the trick. I'm going to go apply and I'm going to go save. I'm going to close this. If you wish to take it to the next level and create instance and parameterize certain attributes, feel free to do so. For now, I'm just going to right click on it, go rename MM master material underscore meta human and just drag and drop this onto the model. So basically, I have something rather than just a uh, silly old Lambert, you can actually get rid of that Lambert now, you really don't need it. So if you have the albedo texture that comes with it, definitely it would be a good time to kind of bring this over and apply that to your base mesh. If you have roughness, even better, you can make use of subsurface scattering, go to shading model, change your shading model to subsurface and bring epidermal, subdermal if you have them. For now, I'm just demonstrating the workflow. I'm not going to dive too deep into details, but this is something that you can certainly um, apply to really take your uh, metahuman to the next level. Now, let's go to the next chapter where I talk about how to create and how to configure uh, MetaHuman Identity Asset. Now, next step is to create and think and configure your MetaHuman Identity Asset. So this asset holds MetaHuman's face mesh, which is a, a template mesh, a body type information, and your pose information. Now, all you need to do to bring MetaHuman meta Identity Asset is by right-clicking on the content, add import content, and while you have this, just type in MetaHuman Identity, and that brings the MetaHuman Identity node. Now, it drops it into the content, but you can always kind of bring it to your MetaHuman folder. So drag and drop it into the folder, move here, and basically you have that here. Right click, rename, and call this MetaHuman Identity, MHI underscore MetaHuman. 
Fantastic. So now this asset holds your face mesh, body type information and pose information. The question is how to access it. It's actually very simple. You simply double click on it. Once you double click on it, well, you need to make sure that you're logged in to your Quixel bridge. That's why we sort of did that. It's empty at this stage. There is nothing in there because you need to go ahead and add your base mesh to this MetaHuman identity asset. I'm going to go add. You can go either add part or add pose. There's actually an easier way of doing this. And that is by going into component from mesh. If you click on that, you can actually see um, all the models that you have at your disposal. One of them is MetaHuman Reza that I just imported as a static mesh. If I click on it, there I have it. It's the face, the body and the pose for the face. You can see the layout is fairly straightforward. Alt left mouse button to move around and see the character. What I usually do right off the bat, and these are the things that you can to some degree change in a MetaHuman application, is go ahead and sort of select the silhouette of the body that you have in mind. For example, I select the average. I'm not a skinny person. I'm not overweight. Sort of an average person. So that's one thing you can do. Um, even with that, you can select height. If you think you're a short person or you're a very tall person, again, it doesn't give you a granule control over certain things. It's just a, a starting point that you're establishing. So you click on the thumbnail to change the body type and you use the height slider to sort of uh, specify short, average height or tall. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead to the next chapter and create and track a neutral pose. We would like to sort of establish the neutral pose for our character. Now, what I'm going to do, because this checkerboard is really getting under my skin, I'm just going to go from lit to lighting only to see the features better. Uh, and of course, if you have textures uh, coming with your base mesh, I highly suggest you to use this unlit mode, which allows you to kind of get rid of all the ambient occlusion and shadow inform information just to see the facial features, because that's one thing that you kind of need to see very clearly before you specify your landmarks and do the identity solve. For now, I'm just going to switch to lighting only since I don't have any textures that come with this. And of course, I really would like to specify this field of view. So there is uh, there is no distortion. You kind of want to tone down the distortion as much as possible. Uh, long lens usually works really well. So field of view of something like 15 or less will give me a good result. Alt right mouse button and just zoom out a little bit. With that, I'm actually seeing my uh, sort of eye lines, facial feature, and of course the contour for the lips. And that helps me to define and track neutral pose a lot better. Now I'm going to go ahead and select this neutral pose from the window on the left hand side and with that you can see that promote frame gets enabled same button is on the bottom uh, left this button right here which you can click and i can click and as soon as you do that you can see facial features coming on the right hand side and we've got frame zero establishing at the bottom so that's how you basically promote a frame. Now after you promote a frame, this frame is now named frame zero, which you can kind of double click on it and name it whatever you want to name it. But basically, this allows you uh, to manually fit details like ears, like nostrils, you can kind of repeat this process and uh, promote additional frames for certain features in the body. 
but for now this will do the trick one frame we'll see how we go next step is to track active frames so what track active frame does it creates a series of markers along the facial feature of your mesh so right next to the promote frame we have track active frame as soon as i click on that the system detects nasal labial folds um, lips eyelids um, and you can see that for example in my case if i just zoom in ever so slightly it's really not accurate so if that's the case just go ahead and try to sort of uh, select these guys one by one and see if you can kind of add to the accuracy of what you have um, the engine really needs your help to define certain landmarks and now i think it's a good time for you to sort of be as accurate as possible i'm trying to kind of think about the corner of the mouth if that's accurate enough and having a texture i'm not gonna lie is going to definitely help for you to sort of have that uh, establish that landmarks if i may so kind of spend the time a little bit and make sure what you have what you're dealing with is uh, accurate enough so let's say i'm happy with what i have right now and it's kind of working for me now after this section is done you just need to make sure that your camera is locked so right click on the frame and make sure lock camera is there and with that um, you're actually um, you can kind of move forward to the next step which is uh, identity solve now I'm going to press save to make sure that whatever I have is going to be preserved I don't want to sort of lose that again at any point of time if you wish to be more accurate you can always kind of zoom in a little bit and finesse and tweak because right after that point you may not be able to go back that easily and change stuff so based on where you bring your um, cursor you will zoom there that's probably the easiest way to zoom and i'm gonna go in there and just tweak some of these points ever so slightly great now we're still in the identity asset editor win window uh, next step is to click on metahuman identity solve button now this button will be only enabled once at least one per promoted frame and it will produce result uh, based on the landmarks that you've created now i'm going to go ahead and click on metahuman identity solve what identity solve does it actually fits the template mesh to the volume of the neutral pose mesh you tracked in the previous step now you can see it's done now you can toggle between your original mesh and the template mesh you can go with b and a and you can see how accurately everything has been matched beautifully now this is done the last step is to submit your template mesh to the meta human backend so to submit that it's actually fairly straightforward once you're happy with uh, the deformation and what you see all you need to do is just to go to mesh to metahuman to submit your template mesh it will wait for metahuman backend to respond there you have it that's the window that i was hoping to see confirmed that the job is done i'm just going to go and press ok mesh to metahuman completed and now let's go to metahuman page and see what we have now all I need to do is just to go to 
launch latest MetaHuman Creator because one copy of that will go into MetaHuman Creator. And there you have it. <laughs> uh, you can uh, go to Edit Selected and customize your MetaHuman further. For example, there are so many things you can do. Uh, I'm just gonna go with sort of a studio lighting here to improve on the lighting, go from render quality to epic. You can certainly do that. Um, I'm just gonna go into head and probably I give myself uh, hair, something like that. You can go to eyebrows and just pick the eyebrows that work better. And of course, from all of these guys, you can go in there into details and change certain attributes if you want. Kind of give yourself up different, you know, eyelashes, mustache, beard. Uh, for the body, you can go and fine tune the body again, head scale or what have you. You can go to tops. Um, I'm going to give myself a shirt and of course a pair of pants. I'm going to go to shoes and I'm just going to do a shoe better than sandals. You can go to custom mesh in here and uh, with right click, I'm just going to rotate and you can see the shape of my nose is actually fairly straightforward. But if only if you wish to change it to influence the region, you select the area. And with this, you can kind of go and tweak that a little bit. It's just sort of a, a weight influence that is available to you that kind of toggles from a certain default presets into what you specified. And you can kind of do the same thing uh, with, let's say, cheeks. I'm gonna right click, bring this over here. And let's say with cheeks or with jaw, um, I would like to give myself a little bit of double chin with eyebrows uh, or eyebrow muscles. If you wanna kind of bring this or widen the eyebrows, you can certainly do that. Uh, same thing with skin you can sort of assign a skin color to your character. Let's say that's what you want. You give yourself uh, a color and then you can add freckles if you want. You sort of uh, give this more personality. With eyes, you can probably do the same thing. Mine is almost like this. Same goes with teeth. And uh, of course, makeup, I usually don't wear any, so I don't need to worry about that. But that's pretty much the gist of it. That's what you uh, want to do and kind of bring your own uh, face and try to sort of come up with the closest look possible. From here, you can go and be very happy. I don't know why I'm so happy, but that, that's uh, different expressions that you can get. You can have sad, you can be sort of angry and um, have fear and different types of presets and kind of enjoy yourself. But that's pretty much the gist of it. I mean, I'll let you guys to sort of take it from there and have fun with it. But that's pretty much uh, the gist of uh, what you can do and the type of work that is available to you guys. Uh, and you can just have fun with it, take it to the next level. I would say see if you can kind of bring the, your own albedo texture because that really takes the result to a next level. And if you want to really get close to your actual face, that's something that needs to be done. But just for the sake of um, demonstration, just to showcase the workflow, uh, I thought I would just put together this quick video tutorial and show you guys this. Uh, 
I truly hope you enjoyed this. I mean, that's uh, that was a really fun tutorial, something that I'm pretty sure you all have that itch to see <laughs> what sort of look you guys can come up with. Take care and talk to you guys soon. See you in the next video.